and we were at the LL security, and they're very seriously asking, you know, did you pack the bag yourself? And my sister, my younger sister at the time, says, don't worry, we don't have a gun. <laughs> my father was not pleased. Either way, <laughs> we, we made it. But uh, what we spoke to the students about really making sure to follow instructions and to be serious as we go through security. Okay, um, things to think about as your children are packing. Um, we've been looking at the weather as it comes up. Again, we're still pretty much nine days out from when things are starting for us. So there's a little bit of a chance of rain, but I really, um, I wouldn't check yet, but this time of year in Israel is when it does start to rain. So please make sure um, that they are packing the rain boots, um, if they have the shorter ones, that's definitely better for the girls, for the boys, if they have shoes that are somewhat waterproof, that would be really helpful for them um, as they pack the raincoats and definitely layers. Even if it goes up to 75 degrees during the day, early in the morning and late at night it gets cold, especially our first few days that we're up north. And then again in Jerusalem, a lot of times at night it does get cold at this time of year. So they should not only be coming with a small jacket, they should be coming with a few layers. They will be getting sweatshirts at the end of this week or, or uh, right before we leave, but they should have more layers than that so that they are comfortable um, when they're traveling, again, during the day, so they can take layers off and then put them back on. So those are big things to think about. Obviously, they need a small backpack for um, when they're on the plane, but also when we're taking our day trips. Um, we have been, um, we've got a donation, a very beautiful donation from Sulam for drawstring backpacks for the kids, which is great, so they can use those if they want for their day-to-day -day travels. But if they want to have something that maybe zipper shut and keeps everything with them, they should have a backpack for their traveling, especially their water bottles and their hats um, and things like that. Um, if your children want to bring over-the-counter meds, so they like to carry their own Advil or Tylenol or whatever they would use, they can carry their own. We are not going to ask them to give that to us. We will have um, emergency backpacks on every single bus. Um, but if they like to carry their own, that they can do, and they should keep that in their bags with them. Um, so again, if they're comfortable and they want to have their own, great, let them carry that. Um, just work with them. Um, in terms of laundry, you do not have to send 10, 11 days of clothing and 14 pairs of underwear. You can, you do not have to. We will have laundry pickup in Jerusalem, so starting Monday night, there'll be two pickups, Monday night or Wednesday night. Um, the laundry guy will come with his truck to the hotel um, after we come back from the hotel on Monday night um, to pick it up, but they need to have 50 shekel cash. There's no charging a credit card, there's no writing a check, but you have to have the 50 shekel on hand um, to be able to do the laundry. It will come back the next night. Hopefully and, uh, folded and clean. And yes, I told the students also the laundry will be picked up and then it will be washed for you and folded and delivered I see some people smiling. I neglected to let them know that like the Israeli style is like, it comes back like kind of damp and like wrinkled and in like a plastic bag. So, you know, if your child is gonna really be like bothered by that, you know, you could get one of those like um, dual voltage steamer things or whatever, but it's just part of the experience. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to it. It's just, you know, makes it authentic. One thing I also want to mention, go back for a second, um, the prescription medications, hopefully everybody filled out that form. Uh, we went, we really went back on and forth on this in terms of how to handle medications. The number, with the number of people going and the number of med medications that people have, and you've got your breakfast and your lunches and your dinners and your an hour before food and your dinner, and, and with food and without food, it's very, very complicated. And what we know for the students is when we're traveling, time change, difference in routine, it's easy for people to forget. So we spoke with a lot of different camps and organizations that run these trips, and there are a lot of different practices, but our decision was to, to administer the medications. We have hired our own nurse who will be with us the entire time, who will be patching up the medications, uh, and again, many of you know, get the medications to uh, our nurse, Miriam Kotek, she's gonna make all the arrangements, we transport it to the nurseries in Israel, and then if your child gets their medication at breakfast, someone's gonna hand it to them at 
record in a bag with their name on it and what it is. Um, again, we really made it a requirement. If for some reason a student is going to bring their own medication and they don't want to go through that, we just we just can't be responsible for for their well-being. Uh, I wouldn't want to have anything happen. So please help us out um, by working through that that system. And if you haven't gotten the information to Miriam Kotek, please do so tomorrow because there's a lot of coordination that will go into it. Okay. So the bottom line here is everybody. Most people I know enjoyed the experience when they first went to Israel of trying to plug things in that weren't meant to be plugged in to the voltage there and trying those converters that are basically $40 devices that blow up your appliances. So again, I encourage all the students, especially the students, like if you're bringing like a, like a phone charger or something, most of them are 110 or dual voltage. Some are not, some of the cheap ones that are sort of not OEM. So please make sure that your kids are checking to make sure that their chargers for their phones are dual voltage that say like 100 to 240 volts. You can't really read it there, which is basically, that's not the picture, that's actually how it is on most devices. So I can't read that. Get somebody younger in your family, your kid, to look <laughs> and read it and tell you what it says to make sure it's dual voltage. And especially if they're going to bring hair straighteners, blow dryers, make sure that they're dual voltage, okay? Um, and make sure you buy those um, adapters as well. Okay, this is filming. Okay, dress code. We've tried to simplify the dress code for the mission. The last time we went, it was very complicated. Like we had a different dress code for every single activity. I don't know why. <laughs> but this time we tried to simplify it and we made one dress code, which is basically our school extracurricular dress code. This is the dress code, this is nothing, nothing earth shattering. This is the dress code that we have in our handbook for all events, school events, that are not during the school day, okay? Uh, and then there are a few other pieces to it that we added in light of the specifics of the trip. So our basic dress code for the guys is they can pretty much wear any shirt that they want, but no tank tops. In terms of pants, they can pretty much wear any pants they want as long as they're not ripped and gross. I mean, if they're wearing that anyway, we should have another conversation. But um, mm -hmm. but again, it's pretty standard for the guys. Keep what hats are required. Anytime they're outside their rooms, obviously if they're in bed, nobody's gonna go in there and be like, where is your people? <laughs> but uh, and we also want them to wear CC. And we know, look, it's part of our dress code. Uh, we're not going up to boys and like rubbing their backs to see like if they're wearing CC. That's super creepy. But um, so again, we don't know a lot of times in school if they're wearing CC or not, and we're not checking. What I said to the guys is, look, even if you don't usually wear CC, you're going to Israel, you're going to the Holy Land. This might be a good opportunity to pack a couple pairs and really make it part of your experience to kind of have an aliyah, like to raise up your level of commitment by wearing CC. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but put it out there. So let's talk about the girls for a moment. Dress code for girls. Okay, this is our extracurricular dress code. Knee length skirts. As usual, dresses, Aladdin pants. Ooh, Aladdin pants. Some people think they look good. Okay. Um, <laughs> or sweatpants. Non-form fitting pants. So, no yoga pants, no tights that you're pretending are pants, um, no leggings, unless they're wearing them under, under a skirt. So, again, if you have a young lady in your house who's going on the mission, and you happen to just kind of look over there, and you see that she's packing her skinny jeans, that's not gonna work out for us or for her. So again, sweatpants, anything that's baggy is gonna be fine. And in terms of shirts or t-shirts, it's pretty much the same as usual, modest, neck, modest necklines, no pack sleeves, and no Britney Spears thing going on. Next. <laughs> okay, so what we've discovered is that our students really like wearing shorts, like they're on a hike, there's some kind of athletic activity, okay, they want to be comfortable. The standard, it seems, if you watch our students and what they wear when they're playing ball or whatever, they're not playing ball in their sweatpants. They like to wear shorts. So what we said is, what's wrong with this guy? He's a big guy. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> He's a Pokemon guy, which is super weird. Next. 
Okay, there we go. Notice I photoshopped his shorts so they go to his knee. These are basketball shorts. This is permitted, okay? But I explained to the students, I don't want to see those short shorts. You know, I don't know. So there you go. Okay, so that's all fixed. Now, next slide. Okay, so we're allowing them to wear shorts for hikes. So anytime we do an athletic activity, both the girls and the boys can wear knee length shorts. Okay? Okay. So, and what we said is you can put those on again. If you're going hiking, it's not like we did four years ago. We're like, now you're hiking. Okay, now change because you're back on the bus. Now we're here. If your itinerary has a hike on it, you can, you can after diving in the morning, you can put on your knee length <coughs> shorts. Knee length. Knees are not here. And then you can you can wear them for the trip, with the following exceptions. Okay. When we're diving when we're holy sites, we expect the girls to wear skirts and the boys to wear pants, not shorts. So what we told them is, if you're going to wear uh, pants for the girls, or you're going to wear uh, knee length shorts, just bring a skirt with you so when we're diving Mincha or we're going to a Kever, or <coughs> you know, you can, just, you can just pull that on. And for the guys, if you're wearing, if you're wearing shorts, just bring a pair of sweatpants to pull on for diving. Okay? Um, okay. I think we're up to the last. There, go to slide, which is on Shabbat. We're, we're, this is our, this is our, in our handbook, our Shabbat dress code that we use on Shabbat Tonim. Full button down shirts for the guys, dress pants, and dress shoes, and for the girls, Shabbat dresses, or skirts, or shirts, and I really... Sorry, yeah. Sorry, just to be sure, so by a full body down pants, you're saying that you've got a polo that always got like three or four bodies, that's no good. Right, for Shabbat, it should be okay. like, a, like a button down shirt. Sure. Um, and also, like a lot of the guys do like to wear, like on Shabbat, just like a sweater without a shirt underneath. That That is not part of our Shabbat dress code. Okay, so actually... We're going to go to the next slide. And I just want to point out one thing the for the girls. And then, and then we have questions. Yeah. And, and I just want to point yeah. out one thing for the girls, and I did talk to a few of them today. Please reiterate this to them. Our second Shabbat in Yerushalayim, we will be driving on the bus to the old city to go to the Kotel. But the bus can only drop us off at one point, and then there's a lot of walking. Again, like we said, this is the beginning of the winter time in Israel. It is very possible rain. Those cobblestones are really slippery. The walk back to the hotel is 45 to 50 minutes. Please encourage them. If they like to wear wedges or heels or whatever, don't bring them on this trip. Wear the slats, bring the comfortable shoes. That would be so sad if they hurt themselves on the last day just because they wanted to wear a certain type of shoe. Just tell them, take it out of the suitcase. Wear it next week. Please. I'm, I'm, I really encourage them to not take those shoes. It's just not worth it. Okay, and now go ahead. Um, today we talked to them a little bit about exchanging money um, and we sent a form out to all of the students because we have an opportunity um, to have somebody, now this is going to sound a little shady, but <laughs> a, little, a, little. a little, but you have um, an opportunity to have a money changer meet us at a gas station right us at an airport <laughs> and we're going to shut off all the lights and go behind and stand there. Um, we're actually there. Can you change money? You said, yes, we'll have this guy meet you at the gas station outside the airport. Like, it was just a normal thing that was done there, I guess. <laughs> so the only um, requirement for him, to, him or her to come meet us is that we have a commitment of 50 students and chaperones on the first group, so the 11th and 12th grade group, and 50 students and chaperones um, on the second group, and the 9th and 10th group, um, that will have at least $100 that they want to exchange. 
So we sent that out to your children um, this afternoon. Um, they might have a question about that. Am I going to have $100? How do I exchange $100? What does that even mean? So that's something, if they want to share it with somebody else, like let's say they only want to change $50 and they have a friend who wants to also change $50, that would count as one person. So I'm going to look through that list. Um, if they have a credit card that they want to bring with them, that is fine, but we did tell them, A, make sure to check with their parents that there is a no foreign transaction fees, and B, that they should call their credit card company and say that they're leaving the country, because otherwise it will be declined. So um, those are two very important things with credit cards. We also spoke to them about how because it is foreign money, a lot of times it feels like play money, like monopoly money. And again, Israeli money's got a lot of coins, and then you're like, oh, 10 shekels, that's nothing. Oh, 50 shekels, that's nothing. It's money. We don't want them to just feel like it's nothing, and I think that's another conversation that you should have with them about being responsible with the money that they are given, um, and that they should try to pace themselves um, food, candy, coffee, t-shirts, jewelry, whatever it is that they want to buy, pace themselves in terms of how they want to spend it. Everybody gets to go to the Shook on that last Friday. That's a great day to try to think about spending. Um, and again, just, just piece that out and talk that out with them so that they're not, like again, oh, it's just Israeli money and it's fun and I'm going to have a good time. So that's going to be very um, important. Okay, let's okay. stop for, for questions on packing and dress code and money. Okay. Do you have a recommendation of how much cash that the kids should bring? Yeah, we recommend $150. That's like a high-end number. Uh, there aren't many, many, many opportunities for us to spend money. One thing is uh, on Wednesday night, um, we're going to be at the Mafa Mall, so students will be going out for dinner for the dinner, that's Wednesday night, so definitely spend enough for them to buy dinner once. We'll also be at the Shuk, and a lot of the students are going to want to buy things at Mahane Yehuda. And then, again, when we're at the mall. And then here and there, when you're at attractions and you stop by, you know, they have a gift shop, or, you know, yeah. I mean, you want to buy an ice pop or a coffee, that, that's so, it. But, again, yeah, that's a recommended it's a price. It's a high, it's a high number. number. It's a high number. Yeah. Yeah. But, but all the meals are high. Except, Except for, for the one at the mall. No. no. Wednesday night of the trip, after all the itineraries, we all end up at the Malcha Mall and the students can go to a restaurant with their friends. Aside from that, all the other food is covered, but that, except for that one meal. Let's go. Sure. Go ahead, Sorry, quick question. Uh, if, if they want to change money, mm -hmm. they have to tell you exactly how much in advance, right? No. They don't need to tell me uh, the whole thing. I just uh, need to know that there's at least 50 of yeah, this, what this guy's gonna do apparently is pull up his sketchy money bag. <laughs> it's so bizarre, it's the gas station. And he wants it's like, it's every this way. student to hand him a hundred dollars. <laughs> He's gonna give them the shawla. That's how it's working. <laughs> so if you're okay being part of this enterprise, have your student you fill just went straight into the drug night. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> what do you need this information about? I asked them to send it to me tonight just because I want to get it quick, but by tomorrow morning. Um, they kids have a link on, on their form. Um, yeah. you just go to Much more we don't, so much we just take that list. Yeah. Hey, do you have a safe or a place, like, I know, I think I remember last time you guys held stuff for the kids. Is that true or not true? I don't remember. Well, in the hotels, I mean, we put the passports um, into a safe. And but their money and stuff, like that, they're in charge of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just couldn't remember. Most places in Israel accept credit cards. They actually prefer it over cash. Okay. Because um, I don't think about the JVIC card. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, I just, how much is the long way? 50 shekels. And the Wednesday, the first Wednesday or the second Wednesday? This is only one Wednesday. So we leave Wednesday night, we get there Thursday night. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this Wednesday is also the Wednesday that the parents, the family uses the time to visit Correct. Correct. Because the family can take them to dinner. No, we finish our itinerary for the day at Malcolm Mall, and then we come back to the hotel, and that is when the family um, can meet them. The children cannot go out of the hotel at all. They can go. Okay, they can go downstairs. The they can leave hotel the hotel. Is right on top of Center One, so the students and families can go wherever they want and.
center one, but so not me this time. And then we don't have restaurants over there? In the downtown yeah, center, they, they do. They do. They do. They do. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's great. <laughs> and they want to sit with him somewhere, and probably they want to eat. What's the so one right The lobby. There's a uh, cafe right. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah
So that is on their list, on their itinerary. Huh, that Alana brought. Okay, uh, thank you, Alana. Um, on their itinerary, it will say up at the top what bus they're on um, for each of those. And again, there will be signs up. And we're going to email the email And you will all get this email to you. Yeah. What should we one, one, one bag with one caravan. That's it. We don't have room on the buses anyway, and the airlines don't allow more. They don't allow more. One suitcase. And also they don't do that. And one carry. And one carry. Okay. <laughs> Flight protocol. This is something we went um, through with them today. Again, very important. And, and I think that most of you would share this with your children um, as well at home. When we are on the flight, there are a lot of other people on our flight who have nothing to do with us. Nothing at all. And, and again, even our seats. We are not all in one block and that people all in the front are all behind us. We are mixed up with a lot of other people. <coughs> Please remind your children. We will remind them a hundred times in school. There's a way to behave on, on a plane. Yes, it is very exciting to be on the plane with your friends, but there's also a lot of people on that plane that need to sleep, or they need to work, or they need to do something else, and they do not want to be bothered. Please remind them. There's no jumping over seats. There's no switching seats all the time. Please be aware of the, um, of their surroundings, and that they should stay where they are, especially during meal time. Many of them requested specific meals. If they're not in their seats, they're not going to get it. So it's very important um, that they have that. The last trip, we got a compliment from El Al. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen. We got a compliment from El Al who said, Your kids are amazing. And we're like, 
<laughs> They're amazing. We said thank you. Um, but we Did would you love to get that again. again. We should give yeah. this. That would be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, we would love to get that compliment again. Love to get that. So please um, remind them um, of that. We talked to them also about davening on the plane. Um, what Rabbi Kastan said to the students is that if there is an opportunity and it's safe and the flight attendants say it's okay to get up to daven in a minion in a certain spot on the plane, then okay. If they say no or there's turbulence or they say it's just not the right time, then we're going to ask all the students to daven in their seat. Okay, so again, it's going to be, we'll call it um, in the air and just ask your kids to keep drinking on the plane. Obviously, they can't really bring one with them before, but so that they don't um, get dehydrated and get headaches. Okay, so that is on the flight. Again, they're going to probably want to wear headphones and watch movies, but they should talk to each other until they have to go to sleep. Yeah? What's the seating like? Is it alphabetical or something? Um, it looked to me, yeah. when I looked at it, um, the, the tour operator just did it, and it looked kind of alphabetical, but kind of not. It had like a little <laughs> element of funky randomness to it. Um, what we did do, what we did insist on, is we got the boys in one section and the girls in another section. We want to avoid that, like, falling asleep all over each other thing that they yeah. love to do. There's definitely so, bathrooms in between. Um, and again, we told the students, you know, like, if, if during time when everybody's awake, you want to get up and go sit next to your friend and move around a little bit, as long as you're, you're not, like, like a cocktail party. But you can move around when it's not, not meal times, as long as when you're sleeping and when, it's, when there's meals, when there are meals, you are you are in your seat. So I suspect that even among sections, once they get seated, they'll move around within their area, which that we're fine with, as long as they can go back to their meals. Let's stop the questions. Are there questions on the plane? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I encourage them. We encourage them to sleep with any chance that they have. <laughs> any chance that they have. Any other questions on that before we move on to talk about food? Big topic for Jewish. No? All right, food. All right. Okay, food. Um, this is something, again, we talk to your children about. Please remember, food is different in Israel. They eat differently than we do here. Their breakfasts are different, their lunches are different, and their dinners are definitely different from what we have. If your child is a very picky eater, or if they have very specific allergies, which we are taking care of, but if they are very picky, please send snacks. Please send snacks. Um, they will need those. Um, they will want them, and they are teenagers who are hungry, and as Rabbi like, Trencher would like to say, every 15 minutes, when's the next snack? When's the next snack? When's the next snack? So if that is something that really um, bothers them and you need that extra food, please send them with some extras. We do have one student who um, is purchasing some beef jerky as a good protein snack, and that can go all over the place and he'll just have that with him because he's concerned about the food. So that's a good option for protein if that's not something, um, if, if you're not so excited. Um, also realize that like the lunches, um, again, we're, we're given all these this food by the hotel and by the caterers at these hotels. We are being given the opportunity to make our own lunches in Kriegsbein, which is where we're starting up north. But if your kid's not necessarily in love with like chocolate spread or Israeli tuna fish or egg salad, they might want to have some extra stuff for themselves. Again, or they'll cheese. be able to take, or cheese. Got Sorry, cheese. got about the cheese. Um, they might want to take something extra. They will be able to take some food from breakfast, and they will get extra snacks. We'll always have snacks. But um, that they should think about what they want to bring. That be something you can work with them on um, over the weekend. Um, and allergies, again, we are really taking care of that. We have one specific person um, from Go Inspire who will be there to answer questions. So if a kid is, is allergic to sesame, for example, um, they can go over to this person who happens to also be a medic and say, what at breakfast has sesame? What at breakfast has, well, there's no peanuts. What would have um, gluten? Okay, anything like that, they can ask those questions. Yeah? Yeah, yeah one's not peanuts. Yeah. And if they're friends with somebody who has a real allergy or something. You can just hands. give them a lot of snacks yeah. to take on their luggage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it under the plane and take it with them. Yep. And I would pack it in an extra Ziploc bag. Just like There's no customs following? Yeah, no, just no fresh food. Fresh food. Yeah. Um, what about water? I wouldn't, no. bring, I wouldn't bring water. No. 
I'm bringing the water. Water. saying the water oh. is different in Israel too. Correct. So we always have bottled water, um, and we'll have an opportunity to purchase that. But the tour company generally brings that on the buses. Um, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in terms of the country standard in Israel, again, it's it's different here. You know, you know what the symbols are. You've got your OU, your Cup K. Um, so uh, we. Rabbi Tassan uh, spoke to the post team and made a decision about what standard we are going to keep when in Israel. So for this trip, what we are going to do is, for dairy, we're going to do Rabbi Nu. And I showed the students with the Kaladi, two dot, I'm sure, great. Uh, and then for meat, we're going to do Mahajra. So we're not, we're asking students not to eat the Rabbi Nu meat, which relies on a lot of leniencies that most of the organizations that we rely on here would not rely on. Uh, and also, when we go out to the mall, we're going to give them a list of all the restaurants, which is many, many of them there, that meet these requirements. And we also show them this, and we show them not this. <laughs> don't, don't. OK, anyway, moving on. <coughs> Any questions about food? better than giving them a week to <laughs> agonize over who they're with and who they're not with and are they am I near this this person or not or whatever so you can imagine that uh, doing grooming twice because it's different it's been a new time is, is pretty challenging for this group so we asked all the students for their request every student got at least one of their requests so that and we, we told them there's no switching rooms the number of tiny details that have gone into this trip and we'll go into, it's, it's really mind-boggling. So every special situation increases the likelihood of something going wrong. So we told the students, we, we worked really hard, we took your feedback into account for the rooming, for the itineraries. We asked them for first choice, second choice, third choice. Every student got at least five out of seven of their first choices and the average is six out of seven, okay? So yes, there are students who may be like, oh, I want to be on this bus, or my friends are here. Go with the flow, make new friends, experience the world. We know that, again, there may be a little angst, it will work out, it will be okay. Um, but we're gonna know who their roommates are when they get to the hotel. They get to the hotel, in Kispin, they are rooms of four, and in Yerushalayim, they're rooms of three. Uh, and staff will be around. Um, hmm? Everybody gets a bed. In in Yerushalayim, two people get beds and one person gets a cot that I'm sure is really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, mornings are early. Okay. And what I explain to the students is, and this is not just a young person thing. I have the same thing. Like when it's midnight or one a.m., I'm like, wow, I'm wide awake. This is great. I can get a whole bunch of things done. It's only the next morning when I'm trying to wake up that I realize that wasn't such a good idea. Our wake-ups most days are somewhere between 6 and 6.30. Shaka is either 6.45 or 7. So we, our expectation of these students is when we get back, when we say, be in the room, you're in the room. When we say lights out, lights out. Because they're thinking, I want to hang out with my friends, and we're thinking, this is not going to work out well for you. 
Um, so again, we're really going to stress that, and we're really going to follow the students who are unwilling or unable to maintain those two efforts. Yes. One year for them to spend some days on the time again. Yeah, they're they're supposed to be in their rooms at eleven o'clock. And yeah, some will go in early. Six thirty. Many nights we're back at 9, 9 30. So there are students that will go go to bed earlier. That's the um, the latest time that is that should be available to, to them. Okay, I'm still on this section. Okay, and then we'll have time for questions. Okay. For what I explained to the students is that we are in a very tight schedule. And when you're dealing with this number of people, somebody who is late, oh, I need to tell them to wake me up, I need to shower for 45 minutes, whatever it is, I need to go back to my room to get something, and you've got a bus waiting for you, it's totally not acceptable. We are gonna run this like a well-oiled machine, okay? We're gonna, at Davening, at Davening at seven, we're taking attendance at seven, and we're following the students who aren't there. We expect the students to cooperate with us, which is a huge undertaking, it's a tremendous gift, um, and of course, it won't be perfect, but that's really what we're going to be trying to do, get people where they need to be on time. Uh, and, uh, and also, it's different than it was four years ago. Four years ago, like nobody, almost nobody had smartphones. Like I remember, I remember we rented those little like Nokia phones. Uh, so this time most of the students have smartphones and most of them know how to set an alarm on their phone. And you get, you got four people in the room, you could set like 12 or 20 alarms. <laughs> we are still going to knock on their doors to wake them up, but I let the students know it is your responsibility to wake up. Now, everybody here in the room has a teenager, and we know that we can say that a lot, but some people have more of an issue with that. But we're really going to be kind of drilling that into the students. Really, we're going to help you to wake up, but be there on time. Okay. Um, now, Questions. Because you're going to knock on the door. Do you need to let Alpha and Shabbos morning? Yes. Because I know some of them are going dominant at different times. Yes. Do you put them in rooms with people that are dominant at the same time? Because some people might not want to get woken up at 4.30 if they're not choosing to that's do that. That's correct. And that's, that is a, that is a, that's a downside <laughs> of being in a room with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, so when we're in Yerushalayim for the second Shabbat, that's when they have all these different options. How many students out of 211 do you think, think they're getting up at four, at, no, not getting up, leaving the hotel at 4.30 a.m. to dive in Batikin at the hotel? How many? 150. 10. 10. 30. 30. 86. 122. Wow. <laughs> By the way, I want you to know, this group, we, we take our kids for granted. This group is amazing. We actually had to run larger buses this year to the seminaries in Yeshivo because they didn't fit on the buses we arranged for. I mean, in terms of the number of students who are excited about going to the Kotel and getting everybody taken, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool. Now, by this point in the trip, not everybody is going to feel the same way. <laughs> and we will have a system for them to make another choice, even on the fly. Even if they oversleep, we're going to have a system where they can... You know, they can go to a different, a different menu. Um, but we're gonna arrange something to, you know, again, knock on the doors. I can recommend for them some good apps, like Shabbat, my Shabbat alert app, pretty good. Right now. What's that? On a non-Shabbat day, the hotel can give them a wake-up. Yes, yes they can, yes they can. I think it's all automatic, so I think it's a good program. one group, um, but what we are setting up is that um, every chaperone will have a group of kids that are picked um, for the duration of the trip. So starting on the bus on Wednesday, they are, I guess, the property or the children of that chaperone. So you'll have so like 15 kids. kids. Uh-huh, so you make that WhatsApp group with those kids. You know, just a reminder, we're about to board some plane, you know, 
come out of the bathroom, you know, things like that, um, or whatever it is. Don't forget, tomorrow we're going to the Dead Sea. Don't forget to bring your change of clothing in a small bag for your wet, for your wet stuff. So um, just those kinds of reminders and just the person that they can check in with, um, and also so we can check in on the kids at night. But to have one big group is just it's the kids have, let's say they want to get in touch with you. Yeah. So on their itinerary are a few emergency numbers. First of all, we put the, both places where we're staying, plus Rabbi Chantra's number, my number, and the nurse's phone number. Okay, and these also are they'll, really have, they'll have the, community, the contact, their <coughs> contact number of their staff member. Mm -hmm. So if they need to get in touch with someone, like what if somebody's not feeling well during the night, those kinds of things, we want them to be able to get in touch, right? get in touch with someone who's, who's going to be able to help. Are you going to, how often do we get updates as parents? Once or yeah, once or twice a week. Once or twice a week. We're going to be posting pictures to the Instagram and the Facebook every day. And we also have um, Miguel Mizraki with us. Miguel is the gentleman who made the first day video. He will be traveling with us the entire time and creating some videos for, for parents to see over the course of the trip. So that should be awesome. Your phones are American phones over there? Those are the Israeli phones. I remember uh, NCSY does this program over the summer where they do have all their digital programs and they do this day called Young NCSY where they get like 2,000 of these kids together and do this big concert and they live stream it. It's a lot of fun to watch. And I remember, they, obviously they're dealing with the same thing they've got kids on these summer programs and they're on the bus and then instead of talking to their friends, why? Uh, which is not that different than you know, when I was that age and I was listening to my headphones with my Walkman which I still have. <laughs> and I brought on the last mission, by the way. You should bring that again. A walk past in your set kids. <laughs> no, the kids think it's really cool. I mean, in a, in a like, nerdy, what is that kind of way. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, anyway, back to the story. It's relevant. So I'm watching this live stream, and the guy on the stage says, everybody, pull out your cell phones. Everybody, take pictures upload them to this site, hashtag, whatever. So I think that it's that balance between kind of like helping them to be focused, but also co-opting the technology, telling the students, we, we are setting up like a Google Photos group, so they'll be taking pictures of their friends and uploading them, and, be able, and they'll be able to see what people on other buses are doing. So again, we're gonna try to maintain that balance. It's kind of like, like the cat's out of the bag, unfortunately, and it's not going back in. Um, it's out there being a lot of resistance. So again, but we will be saying, put away your phone, guys focus on this, and then we'll be doing that on the bus, and the tour guides will be doing that. So, okay, okay. Do, do we have any other questions on on that, or we're gonna get to the do's and don'ts, and you'll talk to the do's. Okay, we presented this to the students. Do may not the group, I think is the <laughs> Leave, may not leave the group or leave the hotel without permission. So if a student wanders off, they leave the hotel, we catch them down the street because they really needed a shawarma at one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> they can take that shawarma and head right to the airport with that shawarma, okay? We're really, we really kind of hammered into the kids, like this is a safety issue. 
nobody's allowed to leave the group or leave the hotel without permission ever, and obviously no illegal substances. And once again, and I, and I let the students know, because whenever anything like that happens, even if we're fairly certain somebody saw or whatever, the kid, there are always students who are like, So again, what I told the students is, do not put yourself in a position where we would suspect you of doing that. Again, you know, we're not gonna be looking for students that are like, no. But again, we'll know if students are leaving, if we knock on doors and students aren't there, or, you know, other kinds of things. Has it happened in the past with um, on a previous trip? Have people been sent home? The last trip? No, I don't have a history before that. You know, the students tend to be really good, really good. Even some students that I've spoken to that I've had concerns about based on things that happened at previous events or previous years, where I pulled them aside and said, tell me why I should trust you. You know, again, a lot of them really kind of reflected like that idea that I know this is the mission, this is like really important, it's a big deal, I won't, you know, I'm gonna, you can count on me. I hope that's true, but again, in the past, our experience has been that we have been able to rely on that. Um, and really, the students are just very grateful, and they understand there's free time, and they're, they're pretty good about it. So hopefully, hopefully, it won't be an issue. But again, it's important to say, what I said to them is, there's that Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah that talks about like the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. So before he went in, he went in to do the Avoda by himself. Nobody was in there with him. And there was a suspicion, like there were different people that would like leave things out, like the Dukeim would like do it differently. So what happened? What happened was the officials would go to the coin goggle and make him swear that when he went in to the Kodesh Kodeshim by himself, he would do it exactly the way he was supposed to do it. And the Mishnah says that the coin goggle would cry because he was being suspected of something that he wouldn't do. And the people, the officials, would cry because they even had to bring it up and had to suspect someone. And that's what I said to the students. Hopefully this won't be an issue, but we have to say it. We have to be clear on what we expect. And the last thing is, I tell them don't bring or purchase weapons. There are always students who feel like it's a really good idea to like buy a sword or something. Like, no. <laughs> They normally do an amazing job of this. Last year, I, I'm not teaching this year, but last year when I was teaching, the number of students who come who came up to me after every single class and said thank you, it's it's pretty amazing. So <coughs> I think it's a lot of reminding, but we'll try to get them doing that. Um, and um, and and that's really it. So let's have some time for we have some time for some more questions. So um, Hannah Olson will send out an email, letting everybody know, letting everybody know where they can find the pictures, on, and with the link to the Facebook group um, and Instagram. If you have an Instagram, I don't know, is there like a web version of Instagram? Yeah. Not, there is. You can find it online. Most people have it on their phones. It's easy to see it. I'm not a big Instagram guy myself. I'm Facebook. <laughs> um, so I know that we have this two hour window on this one night um, where like all of us are going to have like multiple family members from different sides of the family who speak different languages all shoving into one thing. But you mentioned earlier that sometimes they get back at like 9 or 9.30 and then they don't have to be in their room till 11. Could we mention to family members, hey, this is the official night, but it's possible that the kids might be back this time? So. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. Look at look yeah. at the look uh, look at the itinerary. In other words, can we just see if there might be another window? Only because it's going to be so awkward. I don't know. And I'm sure a lot of us will be in that situation. I, I, I got to be honest. There really That's is no other Monday night. We're we're out until about eleven eleven fifteen when we go to the hotel. Tuesday night, 
we again we come back and then we leave for our night activity. So we're not coming back until about, about 10, 10 30. Um, Wednesday night is the night that we're around, and Thursday night is the Thanksgiving alumni dinner. There so is some and they time need to there. be there. Thursday there's a little night. there's a little bit like, of time. Uh, on Thursday like night, what but they need to be but they need to be I don't want to say that people should come any early than, earlier than like 9:15 because we need the kids in the in the dining hall for the dinner. But there's a potential. In other words, there's a potential window there. Potential. Okay, yeah, fine. I would say like in the lobby and mm -hmm. the Fine. Mm -hmm. Or if they happen to be in the show on Friday, you know. Oh, yeah, meet up. Yeah. Done. Yeah. This is my age. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, when you drop when you do the drop off for the airport, I know that in years past that was a send off, a big thing. We're doing that on Monday instead. Is the drop off really just literally like pulling to the side, saying bye, see ya? They're dropping off their luggage, or are parents expected to be in there, saying goodbye, doing the whole thing all over again? You do not have to say say and say goodbye. Um, there is going to be a small ceremony with uh, some of the later school kids. Um, what time will that be? Get in on Wednesday. Um, okay. Before they get on the buses. Yeah, so, so um, here's the schedule. Yeah, it's, it's, actually, it's actually pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. You're all encouraged, if you can, you can make it your work and life schedules to come to the mission send off on Monday morning, 9 to 10. On Wednesday, like 8 15, we're diving at 8 15. So that's a Wednesday, so we'll be done around 8 45, 8 50. Then the students will load up buses and come back inside. We're going to have some snack, snack for them while we get everything set. And then they're going to go down this hallway and through the preschool wing. And, all the lower schoolers and preschoolers will be there, like a whole tunnel, to kind of send them off with all their Aww. cute flags and stuff. How about you don't encourage parents? Um, so, so for so that, that will be at around, <laughs> that's going to be uh, at around 9.15 on Wednesday morning. And then we get to do it again with the 9th and 10th graders. We want them to feel left out. So, but then we're diving into at 2, about 2.15, we're loading up the buses. So that will be around 2.30. So if that works for your schedule, if you want to be part of that, that's, 9.15 in the morning, 2.30 in the afternoon. 9.15 is what time? 2 p.m. So the, 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 the send-off, the send-off is on Monday. The send-off is on Monday. That's on Monday. It's not really a send-off. It's not really a send-off. It's the, it's your like class on their own. We are talking about yeah. leaving, but they will have regular class on Monday and regular class on Tuesday. Good luck to the teachers. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the reason why we're doing that on Monday is because Deborah Berman is leaving to Israel early. She's like leaving to the airport right from that, and obviously we want both Denny and Deborah to be there. So normally, most years we would, most years we did it right before we left. But this year, because we're flying out on two flights that are six hours apart, it didn't make sense for Wednesday with the timing. And then we wanted to do it on Tuesday, but Deborah's not going to be there. So Denny asked for us to coordinate it on Monday. So that's why that's why it's that way. Yeah. Um, two questions. So realistically, if Davening is a two, they need to. There to put their suitcases away significantly earlier than that. One, one fifty-five. Yeah, they just have to put it at the bandrooms because they're not putting it on the buses okay. yet. And are the itineraries going to be uh, sent to the parents? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 What's the, what's the time window for uh, family members to go to the hotel on that Wednesday night? Is it uh, we expect yeah, we expect to be back at around eight ten, so like eight fifteen, okay. eight thirty until so around you know ten thirty. Do you want it? I have my list right here. Oh, you have it also? Hang on. I have my list right here. I just don't want to forget anybody, so I'm going to go through it. Okay, we have um, our two Benote, so Rayud and Rayud. And we have our four Kolo guys, so Yurel, Ntai, Eyal, and Matanya. We have Mr. Berenson. We have Rabbi Buxbaum. We have Leanne Heller, who's coming from Sulam. We have Rini Isser. We have at least Jacobs. We have Kana Olson. We have Sharon Roberts. We have Denny and Deborah Berman. We have Devora Merzel with Sulam. We have um, Rebel Roan. We have Rachel Sushner from Sulam. We have Stacey and Shimmy Trencher. We have Dan Afria from Sulam. We have Rachel and Ira Kozowski. We have um, Iris Lazarus. We have Beth Schoen, me, um, Josh Baldinger from Sulam, Rebecca Kastan. Uh, Moshe Middleman, Rabbi Grossberg, and Dr. Raven from Sulam. That is our list, plus 
Alyssa felt her lonely. Um, can you send yeah, here. Can you send that in? The list? Uh, Maybe we've been through already. Good question. Why this year on the two plus? We've never had that. That is a um, that's a booking issue with LL. We had the, we had, we had the issue last time on the way back. Last time they allowed us to all go on one flight, but they wouldn't let us go back on the same flight, and we don't understand why. We asked about it. We asked them to consolidate, and I'm not sure why they do it that way, but it's based on how many seats they want available on the flight for other passengers. I don't know if there's an algorithm. This year, this year was pretty complicated because <coughs> we have two flying out of JFK, we have one coming back to JFK and one coming back to Newark. Just a lot of extra coordination and dividing from staff. Um, hopefully in four years, maybe we'll fly out of the DC area.
So what it is, is we have two opportunities for swimming. One that's actual swimming, that's the first Kibbutz Shabbat we're there, we're going to Merkaz Canada in Matula after Shabbat, and they have a whole bunch of different attractions, one of them is swimming, so we'll have, it's like 45 minutes for the girls, 45 minutes for the boys, so once they go down there and they're in like that area, they can change and wear whatever bathing gear they want. Um, and then the other opportunity is at the Dead Sea, I don't know if you call that swimming, <laughs> swimming and floating in slimy oil-like water, which is awesome. Um, last time, none of us brought towels or soap, so we were like slimy all day, it was not cool. But anyway, I digress. So for that, once again, we go to a place where there's like a big, opaque, like machita, and there's a separate girls beach or boys beach. So once again, once they're like in their zone, you know, there shouldn't be a Uh, in a Chalda V, they should, they, it's normal, like, they can wear short, they can wear, like, they can wear their t-shirt, and they can wear their knee-length shorts. Okay, so, um, we'll stick around for a few more questions. Hmm? Yes, unless you are going to say or die, then they got a problem with the skirt. We're going to stick around for a few more minutes and head out there. Uh, for, I want to thank NCSY, because... They were planning to do tonight this evening about their summer programs, and when they heard, we heard there was a conflict, we worked with them, and they said, well, you know what? We'd be happy to move our event to Berman, so to make it easier for anybody here who wants to stay in here about their summer programs. Um, so I want to thank them for, for working with us to, to make that happen. And, uh, and Mira and I will, will hang out outside for a bit for anyone that has other questions. <laughs>
there is a speaker, you want to connect to the computer, you want to just log in. It's easier to connect to the computer. Those here who are in this program are going to start up in about two minutes. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember what he said. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I know, I'm so jealous. I was like, oh, why and what's the 